made three major mistakes at this year's BWR. Or did I? I don't know. We're going to dive into the data and some of the numbers. My good friend Lance Hayden was kind enough to send me his power file. So we actually have his power numbers from the race that we can compare to mine. We're going to dig into it. Let's go. Now I've done the Belgian Waffle Ride San Diego, California before. Back in 2019 when I was on the SDG team with Amanda Nauman, Amanda Panda, who was out there cheering me on this year. Thank you, Amanda. Much appreciated. Uh, back then, I went out there and did it, and I remember thinking, I don't remember a lot from that year, but I do remember thinking, I like this race. I think it suits my skill set. And you get to do it on a cross bike, or you, you can do it on a cross bike if you choose to choose a cross bike, which is what my preferred bike choice is anyway. So you can do it on a cross bike. It's a lot of climbing. There's a lot of uh, dirt single track section, which kind of suits me. The climbing suits me. And after doing it again in 2023, I can agree with that. I think it does still kind of suit my skill set. Now, I did make a few mistakes during the race, but first I made a uh, an unmistake. Uh, a non-mistake? What do you what do you call the opposite of a mistake? There's not really a word for it. I mean, you could call it a perfection or an accuracy. Uh, when I looked it up, those were the words that popped up. But I'm going to go with an edge. My edge number one, and having an edge means you have a slight advantage over your competitors or uh, something that's going to benefit you in some way, give you an advantage. My first edge was going into the call-up area despite not having a call-up. So here's how it goes. In the parking lot, I see Lance across, across the parking lot. I'm like, oh, he probably gets a call-up. I'll just follow him to the call-up area and line up behind the call-up area, but I, you know, at least I could follow him and, and get there. Well, we roll up, we see our buddy Dave Toll, who announces a lot of cross races and knows me and Lance, and I say, hey Dave, you got room for two more two more people on that call-up list? And he says, no, nah, I don't guys, I'm sorry, but uh, how about this, I'll, I'll kind of look over here while you guys slot into the call-up area. So he turns his head, we walk in front of everybody, which sounds really bad and I apologize for all those people that waited there and I just cut you off. I guess that's a part of graveling, I don't know. So we went around and went through the through the start banner backwards. And there's Howard Grotz and Russell Fensterwald and the champ Curtis White and uh, we just kind of make our way into the call-up area despite not actually getting a call-up. Um, kind of feel bad for doing that, but kind of don't feel bad considering I beat a few of the people that did get call up. So, um, you know, edge number one was getting a call up despite not getting a call up. Now, on to the mistakes. Mistake number one comes very early into the race at about mile four. From miles four to six is about a two mile climb, and I was really overthinking this climb. I'm thinking I don't want to burn a match this early in the race and be pinned four miles into a 128 mile race, if I could just drift back into the second group and then the first and the second group get welded back together on the really long downhill after the big climb, you know, no harm done. That's assuming it's gonna come back together on the downhill, which, as you may or may not know, it did not. When all the engines or the big power are in that front group, that group is going to just naturally move faster, whereas in the second group, I'm looking around, there weren't that many engines in the second group. There were Jeremiah Bishop, local uh, local strong rider Mark Miles. These guys are strong, but there wasn't enough of us to actually get from the second group to the first group, which is kind of a bummer, and my race was kind of over before it even began. Now, looking at the numbers on that first climb, I've got right here in front of me Lance's power and my power. Lance rode the front group. I did not. Looking at this, Lance made it up the climb about 30 seconds faster than I did, but with a 719, whereas I was at about 745. He only rode at a 405 watts while I rode at 396. Literally 9 watt difference. I could have just stood up. 
and made the front group, but I didn't. That sucks. Now, my second edge was that I did have some thicker tires, so I knew that those thicker tires would help me to take full advantage of the dirt sections or the unroad sections where I knew I'd probably have a pretty good skill set anyways. So I attacked the second group expecting or hoping to bridge the gap from the second group to the first group on the really long dirt sector that starts at mile 23. So I do that. I attack, I get into the dirt section first, Mark Miles and Jeremiah Bishop are behind me, they come with me. I get distracted. So edge number two is that I had beefy tires, which allowed me to really take advantage of those dirt sections. Now, mistake number two, and this is kind of embarrassing, I get distracted fanboying over Jeremiah Bishop, talking to him about, oh, we're going to catch the front group, and blow past a turn, which sucks. So I probably roll down this turn 20 seconds, flip it, because my garment's freaking out at me, and go back. Jeremiah Bishop just left by the way, he said, sayonara, sucker, and turned into the sink track. So I have to do a U-turn, and all those guys that I just attacked are now in front of me, and I'm just losing time stuck behind some guys, which is a bummer. And to, to make it even more realistic, I didn't catch back up to Jeremiah Bishop until 20 or 30 miles later in the race. So that one missed turn meant I was chasing for 20 or 30 miles into the race, which is a pretty major mistake. Kind of a bummer. And it was at this point where I caught up, or not caught up, passed Lance because he had a, a, a puncture and was fixing it. And he said he was stopped there for about seven minutes fixing that puncture. So me and Lance connected about mile 40-ish and ride together for 60 miles, I think, uh, until beyond the 100 mile marker. Now, mistake number three isn't really a mistake as it is like a race mistake, like blowing past a turn. It was more so, I think I may have chose the wrong tires. The winner, Russell Fenster Finsterwald, was on 32s. Howard Grotz was on 32s. Uh, Lance Haydett was on 32s. And basically everybody that I was with throughout the day were on smaller tires than what I was on. Now. Dylan Johnson, being the nerd that he is, says that because of bike tire rolling resistance.com, some guy with a roller thingy in his garage that put this website together sounds so accurate to me. Supposedly, that website and that guy say that my tires weren't that fast. So it wasn't that they were 37s that made them slow, it was just that they were a slow tire. Maybe, maybe not. I still felt pretty slow out there. Now, looking at Lance's power on a couple of the climbs that me and him were linked up on, we can compare this. However, it's not that easy. We can't just say, oh, Lance Lance on his 32s did this power and me on my 37s did this power. Because I was drafting him on most of the climbs, which isn't that big of an advantage, but is a little bit of an advantage. And Lance is a little lighter than I am. So if all things were equal, he should have less power than me because he's lighter than me if we're going the same speed up the climb. But if we look at the power numbers, now the first climb that we did is about five and a half, six miles long, and I did my best to highlight as close as possible, but you can see that Lance averaged 335 watts while I averaged 343 watts. Now that's on his wheel and maybe weighing a little bit more than him so maybe the tires weren't as big of a disadvantage as I thought, but maybe my perceived effort was a little higher than I expected. Maybe the fitness wasn't exactly where I thought it was in regard to Lance's fitness. Now, on climb number three, this one's almost 10 miles long, so a little bit of a longer means more data. Looking at the power, Lance has a 315, average power and I have a 322 average power and that also includes a pretty big downhill in the middle of that climb. So not only am I drafting him on the uphill but I'm also drafting him on the downhill and still our power is only 7 watt difference. Maybe my tires weren't slow. Maybe I was just slow. Now mistake number four was the fact that I let roadies get in front of me on the dirt sectors. This wasn't a good idea and it wasn't really intentional. I don't do a lot of these gravel races. I don't race against human powered health riders and pro mountain bikers all too often. 
So I was a little hesitant when I was in groups of people, and that happened a few times where I went into the single track sections behind riders that I should not have been behind. This happened, as you all may have seen in my other video behind the HPH rider, uh, who was in his speed play pedals, terrible decision, um, and finally got around him and, and you know, problem solved, I'm, I'm, on the, I'm on the trail by myself. Well, this happens again later at, I think somewhere around mile 100, where I'm in a group with Curtis White, Lance Hayden, and a couple other guys, one of those being a roadie, and Lance and Curtis lead into the dirt sector, and I get stuck behind a roadie, and that was eventually where I said bye-bye to Lance, and that was good for me. That wasn't good for me. What was good for me was that I was riding with Lance, because Lance was pushing me a little harder than I would have pushed myself had I been by myself. So losing Lance's wheel was not good because I think he would have pushed me to get a faster time at the end of the day. However, I don't think I would have lasted and stayed with him until the end of the race because if we look at his power up the last climb, it's about a five mile climb. This is the treacherous double peak. If you don't remember anything about this race, somehow you always remember this climb because that's how miserable and terrible it is. It comes literally five miles before the finish, so you're already 120 miles into this really hard race. You've already climbed, I think, like 9,000 feet of climbing, so you're pretty tired. Uh, and so looking at his power versus my power, Lance averaged 304. Now, I averaged 279, which meant those differences in power, although not huge, about 25 watts, gave me a two and a half minute disadvantage to Lance just on that climb. That's pretty serious. He would have dropped me and put two and a half minutes into me on that climb. Now what's really interesting is that uh, our first half, I actually averaged less power than him, but we know that me and him hit uh, mile 72 together because I was on his wheel and he averaged 315 and that's because he had that seven minute delay where he was fixing his tire and he had to chase back up. And so his average power or his normalized was a little bit higher than mine, but very similar, 310 and 315. Now, the second half, which isn't exactly half, but you can see that the major climb there, you get done climbing at mile 71 and then it's a lot of downhill after that. So in my mind, that's kind of the halfway point. This is where the big difference between Lance and I occurs. His first half, he rides strong, and in his second half, he rides strong, whereas in my second half, not so strong. He averages 282 from that major climb all the way to the finish, the last 55 miles of the race, and I only average a 253, which puts me at about a 10 minute disadvantage to Lance by the end of the day. And really, he didn't even drop me until my mile 100. So that 10 minutes, he literally put into me in the last 25 or so miles of the race, which is pretty impressive if you ask me. So at the end of the day, here are the final numbers on the Belgian Waffle Ride versus uh, me and Lance. He ends up 11th, I end up 18th. He finishes a 6.20.51. Uh, I'm about 10 minutes behind him at 6.30.26. And our normalized for the entire ride, his is 302, mine is 289. If you follow some of the other big riders, Alexia Vermeulen, which was, who was the 2022 champ of this race and third place finisher this year, averaged about 310 watts. So, me and Lance weren't too far off from that normalized power, but that's just to show you how close that top of the race is, where I'm only 20 watts average behind Alexi, and he got third and I got 18. That's just how close everybody is. So, I plan to be back there next year on different tires and with a little bit more confidence to stay in that front group and actually be a participant in that race and hopefully be into some more pictures because uh, me and Lance not being in that front group means we missed out on a lot of good uh, photo ops. And if you if you don't know, if you ain't gramming, you ain't graveling. And uh, yeah, not that many pictures get taken of the second group. So only a few pictures to share. But here's one from Danny. Thanks, man. So if you like this video, be sure to uh, like it, subscribe, you know, do all the, the YouTube things. If you want to support me and my endeavor to make more content, 
cycling videos related, whatever. Um, Patreon, I don't have any subscribers so far. So if you want to be the first Patreon subscriber, go there and give me your money. That'd be great. I'd love that. You would love that too, because then I can make more videos. Um, if you're looking for a coach, look no further, Ignition Coach Co. Uh, me and Dylan Johnson are spending quality time with these coaches to develop them into high quality coaches. So if you're looking for a coach, look no further, Ignition Coach Co. Link is in the description. And uh, if that's a little too much for you, I've also got some training plans available as well. All of the links for these things are in the description. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.